What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Razer Jungle Cat Bluetooth Android controller. So when this was initially announced, I jumped right on it, I hit the buy it now button, and I kind of messed up because I didn't realize that this is only really truly compatible with three Android devices. Now the whole unit itself will connect to any Android device, but to hold it in landscape mode like you see on the box here, you need a specific case, and this only comes with three different cases. One for the Razer Phone 2, one for the Galaxy S10+, Plus, and one for the Galaxy Note 9. And in other parts of the world, they're going to swap out the Note 9 case for the Huawei P30 Pro. So all in all, it's only truly compatible with three or four Android devices if you want to hold it in landscape mode. Now when I initially saw this, I thought it was a telescopic controller, one that would allow you to kind of stretch it out with a spring-loaded mechanism in the middle and place any Android device in here. But unfortunately, they opted for special cases, and as of right now, they haven't announced making any other cases. Maybe somebody can 3D print some down the road, but right now we have the Galaxy S10, the Razer Phone 2, and the Galaxy Note 9. So inside of the box, you get the controller itself. Now this has two detachable sides, kind of like the Joy-Cons for the Nintendo Switch. These can be connected separately to your Android device, but personally, I just wanted to set this up in landscape mode and have kind of a Switch-esque style Android gaming device. You'll also receive the user manual and the three cases. Now, like I mentioned, I'm in the US, so I got the Galaxy S10 Plus case, the Galaxy Note 9 case, and the Razer Phone 2 case. But if you're in Asia, they're gonna swap out this Galaxy Note 9 case with the Huawei P30 Pro case. So overall, the controller itself looks great. We have our dual analog sticks, a separated D-pad, which I'm not that keen on, but I have gotten used to them. A, B, X, Y, start, select. Our four trigger buttons at the top, and on the bottom here, we have our power switches for each side of the controller itself, plus USB Type-C for charging. This is compatible with the Razer GamePad app, and the sensitivity can be adjusted from the app itself. They claim 100 plus hours of battery life, and it's using Bluetooth 5.0 for ultra-low latency. Like I mentioned, this can be connected to any Android device just like it sits, but Personally, I really bought this because of the landscape mode to hold my controller and make it kind of a Switch-like Android gaming device. Build quality on the controller feels great, and I really expected it to be because the price on this thing is $99. I really do wish they would have made this a universal kind of telescopic controller, but unfortunately, they opted for the cases. As you can see here, both sides of the controllers will attach to the provided case and you can just place your phone right in here. It's really easy to connect to your Android device, and you can always download their Razer GamePad app if you want to do some customization. But overall, it should work right out of the box with any game on Android that supports controllers. It's actually working in X input mode, so emulators are going to be no issue at all with this controller, and that's one of the main reasons I picked this up. So since this gamepad is running in X input mode, any game or emulator that natively supports controllers on Android will work with this. And I figured I'd go ahead and test a few here. First up, we have King of Fighters All-Stars. I've been playing this a lot lately, and I didn't know it had controller support built in. I've been using the touchscreen, but now I know it has controller support. I'll definitely be going to this controller for the game. So far, all the buttons on this gamepad feel great. Now, the analog sticks feel like they were ripped directly from a Nintendo Switch, so if you're not into those analog sticks, you probably won't like these. But I've used the Nintendo Switch a lot, and I've gotten used to them. I really like the way this thing feels. I had to throw it in here, but Minecraft has native controller support on Android and it's going to work fine with this. I also wanted to test out a racing game with this gamepad, so I went with Real Racing 3. I do have automatic gas on, but brake and steering assist are off. And the controller works perfectly fine with this game, so racing games shouldn't be an issue with this gamepad.
Pretty much all the Rockstar games on the Google Play Store are compatible with controllers, especially Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and works fine with this. Another way I like to play my games on the Razer Phone 2 is connected over HDMI to an external monitor or a television. And as you can see here, I'm still connected with the Razer Jungle Cat. It does feel a little too narrow. I wish they would have widened up that middle piece a bit, but it does work. But like I mentioned, I picked this up because of the landscape mode, holding your phone right in the middle and kind of making it like a Switch device. I really wouldn't recommend buying one of these if you don't have a supported phone. There are better options out there, and if you have a phone that supports HDMI out, just connect an Xbox One controller and you'll be good to go. Or you can get a clip for the Xbox One controller and hold your phone right on top. Now on to my favorite part, emulation. This is Dreamcast. I'm using the ReDream emulator from the Google Play Store. It does natively support controllers, so the Jungle Cat is going to work fine with it. So with a lot of these new controllers coming out, the D-pad is separated, and I'm kind of used to it, but this one's throwing me off a little bit because it's sunken in in the middle, so it might take a little bit of time to get used to it. But overall, it does work, and this controller is really responsive. We're using that Bluetooth 5.0, so we have really low latency here. I personally don't notice any input delay. The PPSSPP emulator from the Google Play Store recognized the controller right off the bat. I didn't have to do any custom binding here. And if you're into retro arts, that's not a problem at all because this controller was detected as soon as I started it up. I'm using Yoba San Shiro for Sega Saturn here, and it works great. And I had to throw a little bit of PlayStation 1 emulation in here. This will work with the PC SX Rearm Core and RetroArch or any standalone PS1 emulator on the Play Store. And finally, the Dolphin emulator running Soul Calibur 2. Now you will have to map all of the controls for the Dolphin emulator, but it does work great. So in the end, I really love this controller. It's got a great build quality, awesome battery life, Bluetooth 5.0. The sticks and buttons feel great. The only downside is the compatibility with these cases here. If they would have went with a spring-loaded design, otherwise known as a telescopic design, this would be a definite buy for many people with Android devices. But we're really limited with the cases they provide with this. The whole setup definitely has a Switch-esque vibe to it, and I really dig this. I love the way that the Switch is set up, especially the Switch Lite, and this is the main way I love to play my Android games with a controller. But there are other options out there if you don't own a device that is compatible with the cases that Razer provides. The main controller I've been using is the Sataki 7007X. It's much cheaper, coming in at around $30 to $40, but unfortunately some of the bigger devices won't fit in here, and that's when I move up to the GLAP controller. Much more expensive, it's $99 just like the Razer Jungle Cat, but everything fits in here from the Note 10 to the Asus Rogue Phone 2. But if you do own one of the phones that's truly compatible with this controller, this is a great option for an Android controller. It is a bit expensive, but you really get what you pay for. This thing will last, it's got amazing battery life, the buttons and sticks feel great, and hopefully if and when they release the Razer Phone 3, they'll actually include the case with that phone or offer an option to buy one. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave links to Razer's website so you can learn more about the Jungle Cat. I'll also leave some links to Amazon in case you want to pick one of these up. If you have any questions or you want to know anything else about this controller, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.